The final component on the cheap Chinese quad or scooter wiring loom is the ignition key. Simple enough, it's a key switch and it's got two circuits. The first circuit is the red and black. The red goes to the battery positive, the black goes to the starting control circuit and possibly some other controls. Uh, and the when you turn the ignition key on, let me demonstrate that. Let me bring a meter in. And I shall put across red and black. And when you turn the ignition key on, it should short those out. Which it is. The other circuit it's got is the uh, green and black and white. The green is the chassis of the vehicle. The black and white is the high voltage. Note you can't get electric shock off this for the uh, output from the alternator to the high voltage ignition. And usually they control the vehicle, they stop the vehicle. This is currently in the off position. If I turn it on, that opens. To stop the vehicle, all it does is when you turn the ignition key off, it shorts that out and that's what stops the engine. It follows then that uh, the easiest way to bypass the key is unfortunately, not on all bikes, but it's just to unplug the ignition key and then you can bump start the vehicle. Because by unplugging it, you've basically taken that short circuit out that stops the engine from running. However, I'm more interested in seeing what's inside this and seeing what is the quality of the construction inside. And actually, you know what? Before I do this, I should do a lock picking lawyer thing and I should try and uh, and I should try and uh, pick this lock. I'm going to go and get my uh, lock pick set. I'll be back in one moment. I have my lock. I have my picking tools. I have a meter wired up to it so I can tell when it's on. Okay, so although this is a, is a sort of double sided key, it's designed so it can go in either way around, but. I would guess the pins will just be on one side, as in most of these locks. I'm not an expert in locks. Uh, I shall use my favourite pick, which has just got a little ramp in there. We'll try this one first. And I shall use the tensioning bar, which is used to provide rotational pressure onto the lock. So I shall slot this in. And I shall apply that pressure. Let's get this into a nice comfortable position. This would normally be locked in position, just in, it would be built into the vehicle as such. So I shall do this. So I'm now providing just a gentle pressure to the side and I'm going to strim the, uh, the pins in here and see if I can get any rotational movement in that. It's, it's picked. That wasn't too hard. Can I, can I just turn that back to turn it off? Yeah, so it's not a secure lock. Okay. Now we've ascertained it's not terribly secure and even I can pick it, which is quite quite good. Uh, or bad, really, but then again, you can just unplug it. Let's take it to bits. And we'll see what the quality of the actual the switch is like inside. I'm guessing it's going to be made down to the lowest price. So there's a little cap here over the wires. Oh no, what's that almost looks like? I think it's a plastic plate in here. And there's a little pin going down the middle. I think that's just, I wonder if that just snaps in there for, for alignment. Okay, let's tr see if we can get the screwdriver up here and, uh, and impale myself in the process. We'll just try and get this whole thing out. In fact, you know what? I'm not exactly going to use this. I shall just cut these uh, bits out and we'll get it out intact. Well, I say intact. It's going to be destroyed by the time I finish doing this. But we shall cut these bits out. There are the contact plates. There's the lock. And it's sliding round in one way round. It's probably covering those two. And the other way round, it covers those ones. But uh, what is the other connection for? The other connection is actually... The other rivet is just actually purely for the strain relief anchor. So can the barrel come out? Let's uh, get some pliers into that and uh, see if we can tweak the interior mechanism out. Maybe it just pulls out, or maybe not. Oh yes, all those little ball bearings are probably quite important. What about the barrel? Is it going to come out? Which side would it come out? Or is it latched in with by our sort of ratchet, a uh, little clip? Oh, I'm going to look down the end of it. 
I can see pins and things. Uh, what is holding that in? I'm going to stick the key in. Okay. I think that that might be held in by a little metal pin there. Let's see if we can get that out. It might not come out. It might be firmly latched in. Or it might actually... Oh, I see what it does. You just push it down and it pops in. Uh, so there's the inside of the lock. It's got the usual thing. It's Well, I'll just zoom down now since it's all just poured out. It's got springs and the little plates. Uh, it's got bulb bearings and spring, more springs for this actual, this sort of clicking action around here. So it's got springs in the side of the contact block. And the contacts themselves are basically, they've got little ratchet uh, mechanisms on them so they latch in here. And uh, they've got a spring underneath them so that when you push them down onto that spring, they latch into the housing and are then spring-loaded so they actually wipe. And they seem decent enough. I would say they're decent enough. Uh, they look brass. I shall give them the uh, the magnet test. Hold on. I shall get one out with its little spring underneath. Get a magnet. It it feels as though, well, it's non-ferrous. That's quite good. What about these? Mm, it's sticking to that, but that could be other stuff hold it in. No, they might actually be brass-plated steel so they can actually put them in and then uh, crimp them over the back. But there we go. The lock is not secure. It doesn't really matter anyway because just simply unplugging it and many of the bikes and quads will actually let you use them. But there we go. Interesting and well worth taking apart anyway.